Uh, specialist Advisor Recreation Safety, uh, I have uh, what I consider to be easily the best job in Natural Resources Wales. Uh, to go back to Daddy's joke earlier, I do always say to people, if you cut me in half, like a stick of rock, it would probably say Forestry Commission all the way through me. Uh, they joined the Forestry Commission uh, with the Environment Agency and with the uh, Countryside Council for Wales. Uh, they did that 10 years ago. Uh, it's been an interesting uh, amalgamation of, of the different organisations. And so uh, Forestry Commission Wales, we have a, a great big mountain bike offer. We have uh, 500 miles of, of official trail network. And one of my functions uh, is to make sure that we administer it all safely. I also uh, am responsible for the, all of the counters that we've got. Uh, so this is what we're going to talk about. Uh, I, we're really zooming in now into the technical difficulties that I have in getting those lovely graphs that, that people have been showing because uh, I'm the one who manages the counters. Uh, many of you will have heard of Line Top. Uh, a small company from Abertillery who supply the counters. Uh, they've come to end of life, we've moved on to another company called Chambers, uh, which interestingly link with uh, local weather data, and we'll see that presently. Uh, I'm going to talk very briefly about some work we've been doing looking at Strava heat maps and how useful they've been as a tool uh, for, for me uh, to help our staff manage our sites. And, and finally, uh, and, and Heather uh, in, in the yellow fleece at the front has done some fantastic work with the Strava stuff and with Power BI about making better sense of all of that information to use them as a, as a, as a kind of tool. Uh, counter information, what are we going to do with it? These are sorts, the sorts of things uh, that we've all been talking about the last couple of days. Uh, if, if, you, if you've got no hard data, I always get really cross with the seven stains, and I don't know where Fiona is, because I know that their published data, they couldn't fit that many people in their car park. They're telling porky pies. Uh, it just, you know, I know how big the car park is. So, it, but if you've got really hard numbers, then you can do the sorts of justification and planning going forward. Uh, and we take a lot of trouble to have accurate numbers and it's been, uh, it's a terrific tool, uh, as we've all talked about over the last couple of days, to draw down funding, uh, to say this is what we've got now, uh, you invest all, that, all, that, all those big box books with us, uh, this is where we think we can go. And then uh, if it's an EU funded project they want you to have a counter on site and they'll pay for it uh, and you're able to justify what you've done because you can see where the numbers are moving. Uh, Staffing, what time they're rocking up on site? Well, you know that because you know what time your people are arriving. What time's your cafe going to show up? Well, what time are people going home? Let's look at the counters and find out some of that information. Uh, where we've got shared uh, usage of our forest roads, well, how many wagons are using them? How do we split the maintenance costs of those forest roads? That's something else that we use our line top counters for. So a whole raft of stuff that we've talked about. Uh, over the last couple of days. Uh, time of day, real easy. Uh, day of week, and this is, you see, that's why I was saying uh, Saturday, because I think Saturday is the busiest. Uh, this is one of our small mountain bike sites. Uh, and then you can see what's going on. You can see all this strange stuff that was going on in COVID. This is months of the year, uh, up to 2023, when we removed these counters. So if we've got all that stuff, then we can start making some really uh, big conclusions from it. Uh, this is what we would get from uh, the line top type of counters. Uh, they, they, they'll come in, a, they'll, they'll come in, in, in uh, with the counter. That little cube there amounts to a memory stick. And so uh, the, 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 you know, that memory stick with that counter will attach to you know, either a cut strip in the road or a pressure pad or there'll be a brake beam counter across the doorway. The problem is somebody's got to visit that counter uh, every three months, you've got to change the battery every six months uh, and if you've got them all over Wales because you've got 115 of them, somebody's got to make that trip 
every quarter and your carbon footprint is enormous. Uh, if you try and use local staff to do that, uh, he'll have walked out to the far side of the nature reserve, oh I've forgotten the batteries, and then that one goes flat and then your timeline uh, it, be, it ends up being incomplete or you end up, uh, he's moved on, he, he didn't get a handover with the next member of staff and they can't find it because it's so covert uh, uh, and hidden uh, that you don't know where it's gone. Uh, you can see uh, this one, well Line Top uh, have, a, have a site card and they know where that, uh, that loop is under that bit of mountain bike trail but that box is hidden under that tree stump uh, and, and, and so you get all sorts of problems uh, with changing the memory stick with having somebody to visit that site uh, to actually find and, and we've just decommissioned all of these uh, and I couldn't go around and, de and remove them all I had to pay for the same contractor to go and take them all out because I didn't want them being left as like litter in the woods so a lot of us have used Line Top and it's been re very reliable some of our uh, Line Top counters have been in place uh, since 2004 in the early days of Coyle Brennan uh, they, they are, uh, you know, this, uh, yes, you, you know when people are going in and out, you get that click, you don't know whether they're going in, whether they're going out. There are some issues with them. Uh, and you, but you can use them on sites where there's neither power, nor phone signal, or Wi-Fi, or any of that. They are standalone, and that makes them really useful uh, in a lot of our countryside sites that we're all very familiar with. Uh, they produce data in uh, LineTop's own eco PC format. Uh, our IT department hate it, and they're not prepared for us to, to have it in circulation in, within the organisation. So, uh, you know, we've been contracting LineTop to do the drive around Wales and visit all the counters, and to, for them to do the downloading and for the changing batteries. And then you start thinking, hang on, how much is that going to cost? Because instead of it being an internal uh, accounting thing using your own staff, you have to pay a consultant contractor to do it and then you want a five year contract and then it goes over the threshold and then you start having to put it out to tender but nobody else knows where's the counters except for line top and, and you get into all of that. Uh, so, so we're not at the big picture here, we're on about the difficulties that I'm having generating this data. Uh, so that was line top, uh, relatively cheap, you know those things, you, each counter about 500 quid to buy, uh, that's relatively affordable. Uh, you can't find it, so you can't vandalise it, that's been terrific. Uh, EcoPC, yeah, it kind of does work, uh, and, and, and they do uh, work without phone signal and, and, and Wi-Fi, which is, which is what we find. It's a real problem. It's really easy if you've got them on a, on a, uh, a site like this where you've got pay on entry barrier, because you can link into that as a power supply, and there's probably phone signal here as well, uh, which, which would help. So there are some advantages for the old line stop stuff. Disadvantages, it is a bit old school. Uh, it does require staff to visit. There's that carbon footprint thing. Uh, and, and of course, if you're only collecting your data quarterly, or, or even we've extended it to <coughs> thirdly uh, by doing it every four months, uh, it's always old. People are saying, well, how busy was it at the weekend? Well, I don't know. I don't, I'm not going to know how many people were here until the end of the quarter and then it takes line top a month to drive all the way around Wales and so our data's always been uh, four or five months old, uh, not great. And of course it, it, it has been very reliable but some of it is 20 years old now and, and uh, it's a bit like your iPhone, you plug it in and unplug it so often that there are little bits like that that just stop working, uh, so that's not ideal. And so. Uh, and it took me ages to do a new procurement exercise. So if anybody wants to know the source of other, other suppliers who supply visitor counters, we did have all sorts of other people tendering for the work. Uh, and and I, I did all sorts of market research to try and uh, help them uh, <coughs> ask suppliers to help me with the specification because you know, I know what I know, but I don't know what I don't know, and, and so to build the proper specification for that counter contract was a really interesting piece of work. Uh, the people who won it were Chambers Electronics uh, from Inverness, uh, and they've been terrific company to work for. Uh, this is their standard stuff. Uh, it fits in these horizontal bollards with 
counter A, counter B, and so it's now directional. Uh, so we can tell whether people are going in and out. You know, it counts one. Uh, the, this little gizmo here is the, the satellite phone connection. So those batteries in there will last uh, at least 12 months. Uh, Chambers informed me uh, these were installed in May uh, last year, so we're, we're 10 months in. Some of them have, have performed absolutely without fault. Uh, I've got 27 rather than the original uh, 115 line top counters. We've gone because of the higher cost to a strategic 25, and then somebody, uh, a local uh, manager, wanted to buy another couple, so I've got 27 of these. And so, don't need the power, because we've got these big batteries. Don't need phone uh, signal or to visit them. You know, we put them in back in May, and nobody's visited this site. Uh, you know, uh, presumably the, the rangers have been there, or they've been operations staff. But nobody's touched the counters at all since they were installed uh, in, in May, and that's terrific. Uh, instead of uh, having to download all the data off this memory stick via Eco PC, and then copying and pasting it into a Word report, which is what we did with the old line top stuff. Uh, all, all members of staff in NRW get a username and password, and they can log on to this uh, Grafana <laughs> logon portal. Uh, they can select the counter, they can select the time frame, you know, hourly, daily, weekly, monthly. Uh, they can select a period over here, do, they, do you want to know how many was in today, uh, this week, this month, this year, and so you create your own query and it will uh, automatically calculate what's going on, so this looks like weekly, if you can see we've got things going in in one colour, things coming out in another colour, and then interestingly, this is what Brian was talking about, these are all scraped off the local internet, so uh, rainfall, temperature, wind speed, uh, pressure. So we can see, and, and it's not rocket science, you know, when it's raining, some sites nobody goes, uh, but we can tie that data together on here directly. So we've gone from the old stuff, the old line top, somebody has to drive round Wales every quarter, uh, and you can see that, uh, if you could read it, uh, that was 33 minutes ago. So I, that's, that's nearly current. Those things will update every hour, and that box tells me how recently the data has been updated. So those are Chambers Electronics satellite phone counters reporting via the Grafana. You know, they, they're buying in this uh, subcontractor log-on portal for staff to look at the data. Uh, click a little drop down here. It opens a CSV table. Yeah, Heather's nodding. And, and so you can then paste that into Excel and start messing around with it into your reports. So you don't have to copy down those numbers. Uh, you can do that all electronically for reporting purposes. So really new, really sexy. Uh, I like the, the, uh, the Chambers stuff. Oh, that's interesting. Thanks for that, Kerry. <laughs> we said we were shortening the agenda. We didn't mean like that. Yeah. yeah. Strava. Heat map. Or is that it? If I've only sent you that, I've only sent you that. It'd be my fault. I thought we went to a Strava heat map. Is that what I sent you? That's where it goes. Is that your Strava heat map? No, we've done that bit. Yeah, we've done that bit. Yeah. Is that, was that the end? Yeah. I've got to, yeah. Uh, that's where it gets to. Oh dear. From what you've sent me. Because that's a direct file. Yeah, sorry. Oh, well, there we are. It's okay. Yeah, no, that's my fault then. There we are. So I, I didn't send the second half of my uh, my presentation. So we can we can just pause there. The, that's getting the data in. That's been really useful. And if people want more information about 
uh, that tender exercise that we did and the specification that we've used uh, and those other suppliers, because I'm sure we're all in the same uh, you know, thresholds and tender amounts uh, and you might have uh, queries about that. Uh, so be pleased to uh, either come and visit me uh, this afternoon or uh, you'll see my contact details in the, uh, in the, in the uh, delegate pack that Kerry's going to set, that has already set around. Uh, we've also used, uh, and I'll have to talk about it without any, any props here, uh, Strava. Strava creates heat maps and, and some of those were flicked up yesterday. Uh, as an athlete, uh, you can, uh, I've got my own account. When we were, uh, we've got all sorts of uh, wild mountain bike trails that were created across our estate through COVID. Uh, people couldn't drive to Coy de Brennan to go and ride their bike, so they thought, I'm going to build a mountain bike trail in that wood out of the back of my house. Uh, and you can imagine, uh, you know, two thirds of the, whale, of the three million population in Wales live in the valleys. Uh, and, and, and they've got a woodland out of the back of the house, and so they decided to go and build mountain bike trails in it. Uh, that's an enormous corporate risk for NRW. Uh, people uh, building things to a, whatever standard they choose, uh, putting at risk both themselves and other people. Uh, I was able to uh, commission a, a consultant, uh, contractor, uh, Dave Evans, who was able to cross-check the Strava heat maps about where people were riding and building these trails with which bits of those areas NRW owned and managed. Uh, the bright bits, uh, the most ridden bits of wild trail, Dave was able to go uh, with his uh, sports watch on, get a GPX file as he rode or walked down it. Uh, from which uh, we've been able to build our own data set uh, as he was doing those surveys, he was able to assign them uh, and we Im invented a new mountain bike trail grading system because none of them were easy. Uh, it was various stages of death, near death, you know, <laughs> totally. Uh, so that then, and then look at, well, actually, this is a really quiet woodland. So, yeah, hazard really high, likelihood really low. And so we're then able to start adding... Uh, and this is where Heather gave me a load of work using our own GIS system. So we've got, you can imagine how th those linear features have now got points on them with attributes uh, and we've got data. And we worked our way right around Wales in a 12 month period, uh, starting with the heat maps, getting those GPX files, generating our own uh, GIS data set, uh, giving it attributes and so our staff have now got a tool with which to start thinking about prioritising. Uh, they can look at how many people have ridden that Strava segment, uh, how many different people, how often it's been ridden. And you think, oh, well, that one in outside Aberystwyth, there's only 20 people riding that one. They might have ridden it a couple of hundred times, but it's only that same 20 people. Low risk. Let's not worry about that one. This one, this one's been ridden 10,000 times by you know, uh, 5,000 people, that's the big risk. So using that data, we've now got a tool to prioritize our work program. So that starts off with Strava, you know, works through GIS uh, into our own wild trails database. Now we've been able to, uh, we were able to track that, the progress of that project bec uh, using Power BI and Power BI is a terrific system for interrogating all of your data into a, 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 a report on progress. So we were able to say how many wild trails we've got, uh, how many times they've been ridden, how long they were, uh, and then we're able to track the progress of which ones have now got a risk assessment, which ones have got control measures. So it's a shame not being able to show you uh, any of that. Uh, and, and just cover it very briefly. So if anybody's got any questions uh, about you know, either of those techniques or methodologies, myself uh, or Heather know a great deal about that. And, and, and it's a shame that I've sent the wrong file to Kerry. Uh, my apologies. Uh, it's a rare occasion. Yeah, so line top, chambers, heat maps, uh, and then power BI at the end. My apologies uh, for the presentation, thank you. Thank you very much, Dave.
Um, so next up and last up, uh, standing between you and lunch, uh, uh, is Owen. We we will we will run slightly over. Um, so lunch will be about 12:15 uh, or thereabouts. Uh, on pain of death, I have been warned. Find your lanyard, scan the QR code, and put in your feedback, please, for day two uh, over lunch. Okay. Uh, so we really appreciate your feedback on, on day two. Okay, so um, just while Owen is getting up, he's set up, I will say no more.